So you can be forgiven for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Wow. Okay, bro. Um, Hassan, Hassan, go tell ahead. Me, tell me what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is, sir. We don't oh, need to know what it is. It says you can't be forgiven of it. Now you're, you're in danger. That's what you are. You're in danger of blasphemy and the Holy Spirit is what you are. Mark so, 3, yeah, uh, Stacey Mobley, I'm going to read the text because you made a statement just now that you can receive forgiveness for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Then I have a question. It says, but he, this is okay. Christ, but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness. Do you agree with the text? Absolutely. So do you have forgiveness or do you not? Yes, you you do have forgiveness if you understand what in the context of what he's talking about when he says blaspheme, you know, the Holy Spirit. That's listen, why I'm brother, asking you, what does listen, that mean? Especially when we, brother, listen, brother, it, regardless of what blaspheme the Holy Spirit is, it, it's not relevant right now. And I'll explain to you why, brother. Christ says, but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Spirit hath never forgiveness. What does that mean when he says hath never forgiveness? Popping purse, popping mollies, and putting powder in your nostrils. We be in the trenches, needles under benches. We be giving them the gospel. I keep 12 Sakari members with me. We be moving like apostles. True. Some stitches is dead traps, hair wraps, but you still a doctor. The church don't even know the truth. They can even tell you you an Israelite. And the Arabs selling you all the switches and the malt liquor are the Ishmaelites. You can show a nigga slave ships in the Bible, still won't get it right. Until the time's out, then a the nigga gotta find out what them missiles like. Stay smoking. Question, comment, or smoke? Can you hear me? We hear you. We hear you. What's going on, Stacy Mobley? I want to know what must I do to be saved. I have faith in works. Are you the Christian that was on the comment board? Please say yes. It doesn't even matter. Of course, he's a Christian. <laughs> Stacy Mobley, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, I asked a question, what must I do to be saved? You are given an answer. Faith and work. We'll, we'll read it. We'll read it for you. Get Revelation 14 and 12. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yahusha. Right. Now, get me Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. Matthew 24 and 13. Mm -hmm. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Same shall be saved. So, Dr. Stacy Mobley, what does the word endure mean? Well, in Matthew chapter 24, the text you're referring to has to do with the destruction of Jerusalem. That's the context of Matthew chapter 24. And um, no, no, no. to endure means to remain faithful, to remain faithful. Uh huh. Okay, so well, are, you saying that, the end. are you saying that Jesus Christ saved, came back and saved people in 70 AD? No, I'm not saying that. I asked, what must I do to be saved? And I wanted to, I wanted a reference. I wanted you to comment on Peter's answer to his audience in Acts chapter 2, verses 37, when they asked the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, he told them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Is that what you teach? No, so, we harmonize the whole Bible. What you're doing is so, so did Peter, hold on. Did Peter tell the truth there, or did he did he not tell the truth? Stacy, hold on. It's just like when when they told the uh, the Gentiles in Acts 15 that they only had to not eat bloody meat and and food strangled. Does that mean that's all they had to do? Yes or no? Ha! You see how you? Yeah, now? yeah, yes. According to what? According to what the letter? informed them to do but these these gentiles had already become christians well no 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 so you're telling me that they didn't give them the two greatest commandments only thing they gave them was food sacrifice to idols things strangled them from blood they didn't have to keep the two greatest commandments dr stacy 
No, these individuals had already obeyed the gospel. This is a Jerusalem conference <clears throat> where the discussion is concerning whether these Gentiles have to uh, be faithful to Moses or be circumcised. That's the context in uh, Acts chapter 15. It was the Jerusalem conference that they were involved, they were involved in. Okay, so all you have to do is believe in so what Peter is saying is, is according to you, everything else Peter taught in his own books and in what Christ told them, the Great Commission, only thing he said is that you have to believe in Jesus and be baptized and you can be saved. Peter said, according to Acts 2.38, when they asked the question, here's an inspired apostle, when he gave an invitation, he told them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the Greek word there is ace, which means unto or for the purpose to obtain the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so where did it say they got saved? Acts 2.38, and you shall receive the remission of your sins. That's salvation. Wait, okay, so when you're forgiven, for, give me Romans 3 and 25 aside. So you're telling me that when your sins are forgiven, you're saved. That's exactly right. That's what Peter says in Acts 2.38. Okay, watch this, Romans 3 and 25. See, you have a problem. I know you. I've seen you on other channels, and you have a problem with isolating and isolating the text. You got a hormone. I'm just you reading. I'm just reading what the text says, my friend. Exactly, but you're only reading one line of the text instead of harmonizing all, all the scriptures together, the volume of the book. So read Romans three. That's exactly what I'm. <clears throat> well, I, I want to identify first of all Acts two thirty eight, and I'll be glad to harmonize everything else in the text. Doctor Stacy, let me let me rebuttal to what you just said. So read. Romans 3 and 25, um, and if I may dig and I have some after this, Romans 3 and 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through his through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. For the remission of sins that are past. See, you're correct that you get your uh, remission from your sins that are past, but what about the submit, uh, sins that you commit after accepting Christ? Can I give you a scripture for that? Yes, please answer directly and correctly. Okay, let's go over to 1 John and the chapter is one. And here's what John says by inspiration. He says, beginning at verse number seven, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the Christian or the individual who falls away and sins. He confesses his sins. He repents of his sins and the blood of Christ cleanses him. Keeps on cleansing him. That's what literally the Greek reads. It's in the present tense. He keeps on cleansing him from his sins after he has sinned once he becomes a Christian. Okay, so after you sin, when you come become a Christian, you uh, you just go to Christ and you get forgiven. Is that what you're saying? No, you repent of your sins and you confess your sins according to what First John one teaches. Okay, so what about after you after you come to Christ and you what happens if you sin willfully after you come to Christ? We all sin willfully. Everyone knows what they're doing when they're sinning. If you're referring to Hebrews chapter ten. The text is dealing with apostasy going back to Judaism. That's the will for sin. There's no more sacrifices going under an inferior law system wherein you can't re receive forgiveness. That's the will for sin in that context. Okay, so even in that context, if you commit that sin willfully, according to your understanding of what you say that context is, if you do that willfully, then you won't be forgiven for that sin. You won't be forgiven if you the, the willful sin is going back under Judaism. That's what the whole wait, book wait. of Hebrews is all about. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, we got to deal with that. So, is there a sin unto death in after you receive Christ? Yes, there is. Okay, so why did he say, "Pray not for that person who sins unto death"? If when you come to Christ, you can do whatever the hell you want and just ask for forgiveness. Why is John saying, "Pray not for that sin"? 
because the sin unto death is a sin of, of a sin that an individual refuses to repent of. That's the sin unto death. That's it's not a sin that a person is willing to repent of. Show me that. But a sin that a person that is not willing to repent of is a sin unto death. We can receive forgiveness for any sin we commit, and it's not a show me it's not a John free ball for us to do sin. Show me that in five first John five and sixteen, because you just superimposed every your whole Christian dogma into one text. No, I just gave you the understanding of the text. Okay, well let's see what let's see if the text is saying what you said it is said. First John five and sixteen. First John five and sixteen. You said, Oh, if they're unwilling to repent. Let's see if he says that here. First John five and sixteen reads. If you see any brother, or I'm gonna read KJV. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not a sin unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for that sin, not unto death. There is a sin unto death. What sin is that unto death? What sin is unto death after receiving Christ? It's a sin a person refuses to repent of. Where does that say that at in the text? That's where you have to come to understand in the text and what John is oh, saying, okay. because it, everyone can repent of past sins. Okay. That's what First John one says. Okay. So you cannot, you can't, you cannot put First John one when the Bible tells you you can receive forgiveness and, and for sin, and then First John five and say you can't receive. Now you have a contradictory. Well, that's not that's not the case. It's your understanding that's contradicting. You're saying, well, would you saying agree in First John chapter one, a person can receive forgiveness for sin? Yes, a person can. As, as you always, as you always say, do you believe the text? Do you believe the text when John said you can receive forgiveness for sin committed if you confess those sins and the blood of Christ continually cleanses us? You can. Do you? Do you agree? Let, let me. Answer you. Let me answer you. You can, but that doesn't mean God is going to do it. Excuse me. You can. It's possible to be forgiven, but that doesn't mean God is going to forgive you. He just said in first John one, he will forgive you. So are you saying God is not going to forgive you? And he just said that God will forgive you. Okay. So where, where are we at? First John, what? First John, first John chapter one, on. verses seven and following. Okay. Because if that, if that's your understanding, then we have a problem. There is a first John three and one. First John what? First John chapter one. Uh huh. First. Verses number verses uh, seven through nine. Okay. First John one seven and nine. Hold on real quick. Okay, so First John one seven and nine. First John one seven. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanses us from all sin. Okay, so what does that mean to you? What are you saying that that means? I'm saying exactly what he says. We don't. You don't. Have, you don't need okay. to be a scholar okay. to understand okay. what John. Is saying. Okay, so so the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from the uh, sin of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is? I'm not asking you that. Does the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you from the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. When you understand what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. So you can be forgiven for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Wow. Okay, bro. Um, Hassad, Hassad, tell go me, ahead. Tell me what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is, sir. We don't need to know what it is. It says you can't be forgiven of it. Now you're, you're in danger. That's what you are. You're in danger of blasphemy and the Holy Spirit is what you are. Mark 3, yeah. 29. Spacey Mobley, I'm going to read the text because you made a statement just now that you can receive forgiveness for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Then I have a question. It says, but he, this is Christ, but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness. Do you agree with the text? Absolutely. So do you have forgiveness or do you not? Yes, you, you do have forgiveness if you understand what in the context of what 
he's talking about when he says blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That's listen, why I'm asking you, what does that mean? Stacey Mommy, brother, listen, brother. It, regardless of what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is, it, it's not relevant right now. And I'll explain to you why, brother. Christ says, but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Spirit hath never forgiveness. What does that mean when he says hath never forgiveness? If you want to ask me that question, I don't mind answering it, but we have to take the text in its context or else it's a pretext and not a proof text. You have to understand what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is to understand why Christ said there's no forgiveness. So do you agree that Christ said you cannot be forgiven for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. If you understand what that means. <laughs> so real quick, I just want to make sure. You say that you can be forgiven for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Am I putting words in your mouth or did you say that? You can be forgiven of anything. Okay, so yes or no that Jesus Christ said you can never be forgiven for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to an audience that he was dealing with who charged him with brother, being a Brother, brother. With being a devil, brother, and Jesus brother. was doing his miracle work through the Spirit. That was the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit when they I charged didn't... him with producing miracles and doing the works he did by a demon. That's right. the understanding of what blaspheming of the Holy Spirit is. Thank I can't you, do that today. You. Oh, okay. Can't do that today because we were not there in His presence. Okay, well, brother. First of all, um, I didn't ask you to go on a short soliloquy as to what you thought blasting the Holy Spirit you, you, Hold on, brother, brother, brother. I'm going to give you a chance to speak, brother. Please, brother, brother, I'm trying to be reasonable, brother. Brother, I didn't ask you what blasphemy or the Holy Spirit was, my brother. I didn't ask you that. It's fine that you, you said what you believe it is. That's fine. What I asked you was, first I asked you, do you believe that you can be forgiven of it? You said yes. Then I asked you, yes or no, did Jesus Christ say, but he that commits blasphemy of the Holy Spirit hath never forgiven us? Did he say that? Absolutely. When you understand what it is in its context, that's why you're struggling with brother, my brother, answer. I didn't, I didn't because you, you can't keep going on these. I'm, I, I didn't, you, you keep adding extra stuff to it. I'm not asking you all that. Now, let, let's just let the, aud the audience is, is going to be able to watch this and they'll be able to dictate and come to the understanding of who's correct either well, they've already dictated they've already dictated and expressed these bugged out so but let me uh, can I ask one more question it doesn't matter what the audience says okay. you have your own followers yeah, that's fine we can move on from that let them let them let them let them chill out let them Stacey Mobley finish your uh your line of thought and then Asad's gonna propose a scripture what I'm saying, and I, I'm not trying to be unkind. I think you guys really, uh, I, I believe you're sincere. You're just not good exegetes of scripture. You're involved in a false doctrine. Uh, you're involved in something that the Bible doesn't teach. You deal with people who are ignorant that don't know scriptures. That's why you have these so-called smokes when if you really believe what you believe, Wait, so we, we should have should wait, have a formal faith now now i gotta now i gotta just because that was a real that was a slick that was a slick jab dr stacy now i think you're mad at the fact that we're just some young up-and-coming young punks who are showing you old bottles who don't have the the midas touch who don't have the street from the younger generation that's what i think you're mad at Dr. Stacy Mobley, I think you're mad at that. <clears throat> give me, give me Matthew chapter. I'm, I'm really. You know give me Matthew chapter five. I'm really not. I, I wish I could. I wish I could really have a good conversation with you guys, and 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 let's reason with the scriptures. I'm, I'm not mad at you, really. I'm not. Conversation right now, brother. We ain't got to take it. Over. Not, not. Pose your pose your question then for the brother. Okay, I'm, I got Matthew five, Deacon. No, nah, don't worry about it. Just okay. so Stacy Mobley, you made a statement. That um, you don't, do you believe that you have to have works to be saved? Yes or no? Oh, you got to have faith. Yes, faith without works is dead. Right. So, what are the works that you have to have? Real, real quick, before I get ahead of myself, when when Jesus Christ was on the earth in John 15 and 10, when he made the statement, If ye keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, e even as I have kept my Father's commandments 
and abide in his love, who are what are his father's commandments? And where do we find them outlined in the Bible? Jesus kept his father's com Jesus kept his father's commandments and being obedient to his purpose for coming to the earth. That was his father's commandments, okay? Hold on, hold on. You, now, here's the, the game that you're not going to play is what you just attempted to do. You said Christ coming to the earth is him keeping his father's commandments. That's one thing, first of all. It said father's commandments, plural. So what are his father's commandments? Can you list them? What do you mean I'm playing games? I, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm just answering what you're asking. But, but you're not answering it truthfully. You're, you're playing a game. I think it's pretty... What, what do you mean truthfully? Jesus I mean, came to the earth. I'm accusing Christ you of being liar. That's what I'm doing. Let, let, me, let me answer. Let me answer. Jesus came to the earth. Scriptures prophesied his work. He lived under the law. He kept the law perfectly. He was the only one that did it. Wow. He fulfilled his mission. He said in John 8, 29, I do always those things that please my father. So everything that was commanded of him, his mission, he completed it. He fulfilled it on the cross. He himself said it is finished. OK, so I mean, what games am I playing by answering that question? There's so many questions. I'm going to be honest with you, my beloved elder. Um, I want to you know, treat you as an elder because you are. But there are so many questions I guarantee you I could ask you right now that you could not answer. But I really want to I really want to have a formal de debate with you so that before a, a, a big audience, you cannot answer those questions. And I say that I would love to do that. Can, can we set that up? I'm sure there's something we could talk about, but I'll give you a sneak peek right now. Um, do you think that you, you have to keep the law of Moses? Yes or no? Absolutely not. Hmm. OK, so can you execute Isaiah 66, 15 and 17? You're going under. Uh, you're going in the old covenant, and Brother, what and do what you don't understand. Not a liar. Is, this, this is Isaiah prophesying for what's going to happen in Judgment Day, and I think you'll agree. So let me just read it. Isaiah 66. And what version of the Bible do you use? Oh, I, I'll use whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Okay, okay, perfect. Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Has that happened yet, Dr. Stacy Mobley? I have to look at this context and see if he's dealing with uh, the Jews going into uh, captivity. I'm not sure. Okay, well, let's just keep At reading. this time, I have to study that. that. Well, let's keep going. For by I fire. Number, 20, number 22, in that same ver uh, chapter, he's talking about new heavens and new earth right and uh that's happened yet four times in, in uh scripture so we have to look at the context and see what he's talking about okay i've i've read this chapter many times and i've looked at the context and i can tell you and if you think i'm not telling the truth you're more than free to go into the context of this chapter and tell me where it starts so i'm going to read it again verse 16 since we don't know the context uh verse 16 for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Has that happened yet? Has the Lord pled with all flesh with fire and sword yet? If he's dealing with Jerusalem's destruction, it has. Again, I have to read the whole context, the whole chapter. Read the whole context. Incredible. Okay, let's 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 I see. Mean, isn't, isn't that what we do as students of the Bible? We read the Bible in its entirety. Yeah, hold on a side. But Dr. Stacy, you came on here for the We Want Smoke. You bragged and said we deal with unintelligent people who who don't know the scriptures, and now here you are. Hold on, and now here you you here you are just saying you don't even know what the hell Isaiah sixty six is talking about. No, 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 I didn't say that. I said I have to read it in context, my friend. Okay, now you made a statement earlier and said uh, trying to bring back people back into Judaism uh, is a willful sin that you can't repent for, right? At Hebrews 10, absolutely. Okay, so now I'm gonna act, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen. Would you say that the, the laws of Moses in Judaism is one and the same according to your understanding? Yes, absolutely. Okay, okay perfect. So um would you say that animal sacrifice is Judaism? Yes. Okay, and would you say that uh would you say that okay, cool, like the ceremonial feast days, that's Judaism? Yes. Okay, perfect. So if we see prophets, disciples, or apostles 
bringing people unto these things, that mean that they're sinning a sin that they can't repent from. No, that that I don't know what what verses you you're talking about. We have to go to the verses and see what the text is saying. I'm I'm not even I'm not even saying that they're in the Bible right now. I'm just saying hypothetically speaking. You're saying that bringing people under Judaism or the Mosaic law is a sin that is you cannot be forgiven for. So I just want everybody to know he's saying that. Now we're gonna read this. Let's go to um uh, let me share my screen. And we're gonna see if this is willful sin going on here. Is this willful sin going on here? Lord in Christ. So let's get, uh, first of all, let me ask you a question. Circumcision, that's a part of Judaism, right? Yes. Does it profit to circumcise yourself? No. No, okay, cool. Here's Romans chapter two, verse 25. For cir circumcision verily profited. So Paul is saying circumcision really profits you. You're saying circumcision doesn't profit you. You gonna let me uh, comment on that? Yeah. Okay. Romans chapter two. Let me go there. Let me show you. <laughs> You know, you know when you get hit flush with an uppercut or something, and you start grabbing, and you start holding. That's what he's doing right now. He's holding on for dear. Yeah, no, I'm, getting, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to. I'm getting ready to read the text. Just what what you're saying. What now? What version did you say you guys use? I use whatever. I want to be on the same page. I'm using I'm using the uh, KJV right now, but I'll use whatever. Okay, I want to go to KJV with you because I want to be on the same page. Okay. All right. Do do you do do you understand? And in Romans chapter two, the breakdown, the context is Paul is dealing with. In Romans chapter one, he deals with the Gentiles who didn't were not faithful under Gentileism. Romans chapter two, he's dealing with the Jews who were not faithful in Judaism. Now, when you get to verse, I guess you want to read uh, verse number. What is that? Twenty-five. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. What is that? Twenty-five. All right. Let, let, let's go up a little bit before we go there. <laughs> In verse 21, Paul condemns them when he says, Thou therefore that teaches another, teaches thou not, they, not thyself. Thou that preaches a man should not steal, does thou steal? Now he's con condemning the Jews who hold the Gentiles guilty, but them they themselves are guilty. He says, Thou that says a man should not commit adultery, does thou commit adultery? Thou that abhors idols, does thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law. Notice he says through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, you Jews. As it is written, for circumcision verily profited if thou keep the law. Did they do it? Absolutely not. Okay. But if thou be a brick of the law. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. It doesn't matter. That okay, go ahead. Wait, hold on. It doesn't matter the condition. I asked you a simple question. Does it profit it or not? You said no. You lied. Hold on. Let me let me let me clarify. Let me clarify. Paul is saying circumcision profits if you keep the law. Okay. He says if notice the word if mm -hmm. you keep the law. Mm -hmm. But if you a breaker of the law. Thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Keep mm -hmm. reading. You can't just read a few verses. Wait, a few wait, words. Wait. Okay. All is saying in the whole text, in the whole uh, verse. Okay. okay, so this law right here is dealing with Judaism, correct? Absolutely. Okay, so can, can practicing Judaism circumcise your heart? No. Okay. Now let's read this together. Verse 26. Therefore, if the uncircumcision, who's that? That's the Jews. 
No, the uncircumcision oh, is. Oh, the uncircumcision is Gentiles. The circumcision okay. is Jews. Okay, if the uh, if the if the Gentiles keep the righteousness of the law, which is the Mosaic law, shall not his circum uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? What does that mean? Okay, the Gentiles over in Romans chapter two and verse fifteen. Let's go back to verse 15. Verse 14. Let's go back to verse 14. If you can scroll up, we'll, we'll answer that. Verse 14. There you go. For when the Gentiles who have not the law, they don't have, the law wasn't given to the Gentiles. However, by nature, the things do by nature the things contained in the law. These having not the law are a law unto themselves. You see, the Gentiles wasn't given the oracles of God. They weren't given the law of, of, of uh, Judaism or Moses. However, they did the things wait, contained wait, in the wait, law in their heart. Wait, hold on. You mentioned oracles of God. What's the oracles of God? Judaism, right? I'm, I'm talking about the law of Moses. Right. The oracles of God is Judaism. <laughs> Yes, that's what this text is talking about, what we're reading. No, no, no. The no. law of Moses. I'm saying when, when the Bible talks about the oracles of God, that's talking about the Mosaic law or Judaism. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to get that straight. I didn't I want to make sure I was walking with you. But go ahead. You gotta under, you gotta let me know why keeping the Mosaic law can circumcise your heart. You gotta you gotta explain that. Because it's a spiritual circumcision, Colossians chapter two. Ooh, it's not. Yeah. It's not physical circumcision. I don't care. I don't care if it's metaphysical or fourth dimension. You said that the Mosaic law does not profit it. Then you said the Mosaic law cannot circumcise your heart. And you said and now you're caught in a trap. You said, oh, oh okay. it's not talking about a physical is talking about spiritual your heart the point is is you just got confounded by admitting by your own admission that judaism practicing judaism circumcised your heart no that doesn't if you would just read the end of the chapter it'll it'll tell you that it doesn't my now watch this. just read the end of the chapter watch this verse 27 and shall not uncircumcision which is by nature if it fulfill the law judge thee what law is he saying that these the uncircumcision has to fulfill? Just keep reading. Mm. No, just keep reading. Your, your answer is in verse 28, my friend. Your answer is in what you're asking me. Your answer is in verse 28. Read verse 28. Hold on, hold on real quick. Because you mentioned something. First Peter 4 and 11. Look at my screen. If any man speak... Let them speak as the oracles of God. You just said that the oracles of God is the Mosaic law in Judaism. So Peter is saying, if any man speak, let him speak as it be of the Mosaic law. Why don't you do that? No, that's not, that's not what he's saying, friend. You just said you admit it, which is why I caught you in a trap before I even threw you back to the to the to the lake. I caught you in a trap. I made you admit it that the oracles of God was the Mosaic law in Judaism. And here it is, Peter the Rock said that if any man speak let us be the oracles of god so why don't you speak the oracles of god the oracle the oracles of god are just not the mosaic law my friend the oracles of god are now the law look at him look at him he said he didn't he see you turn it into a pain freak now you done got me in my zone let's go to zechariah chapter 4 okay, well, let's go to zechariah that's, that's, chapter that's, can, we, can we go back to romans romans 2 28 no 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 29 You're, please Hold on, hold on. Let I, me go that your question. I got one more. I got one more scripture, and we can go back to Romans. So you said the the high holy days, the ceremonial days, are Judaism and the Mosaic law. Keeping those is putting us under a sin that's unforgivable. Of why here in the kingdom in Zechariah fourteen it says that there all nations of the earth have to come up to Jerusalem to keep the feast of tabernacles. Is that is that us in the kingdom? Or the prophets or whoever the Israelites, whoever they may be, putting the rest of the world, including their own nation, back under the Mosaic law and Judaism. Is this not an unforgivable sin? That's not that's no, no, that's 
that's not putting them back under Judaism. That the book of Hebrews that we're referring to in Hebrews 10, the whole book is concerned with the Christians who were under the threat or who were uh, going back under Judaism. Mm. That's why the book was written. Mm. So they wouldn't go back under Judaism. Mm. That's the context of the book of Hebrews. My okay. Friend. Now can you And so no now, now, you mentioned animal sacrifice. This is my last one. Animal sacrifice being part of Judaism and the Mosaic law. Why is James, the Lord's brother, the elder that was at Jerusalem, telling Paul and four of the men to uh, go do animal sacrifice in Acts chapter 21? Okay, will you let me, let me break it down? Yeah. All right, thank you. I, I'll be glad to do that. The reason, the reason he's telling Paul to do that because Paul and, and, and James and all these individuals are Christians. At this point in time, they don't have the proper understanding of their relationship with the law of Moses. They think as Christians, they're supposed to continue to keep the law of Moses. Now, they didn't, they didn't um, that Acts chapter 15, that issue had to do with the Gentiles if they had to keep the law of Moses. But these individuals as Christians, the understanding is not clear yet that they don't have to keep the law of Moses. That's why they're still doing that. They're still under the impression that they do. Mm. The book of Hebrews had not yet been written. Colossians chapter two had been written without the full understanding that the law had been done away. That's why they're doing it. Mm. Okay, so Paul comes to Paul, Paul comes to James and, and they say, watch this. Watch this, watch this. Uh, Acts 21 and 20 and when they heard it they glorified the Lord and said unto him thou seest brother how many thousands of Jews there are which believe and they are zealous of the law watch this and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses here it is James is saying why do why are we getting reports you're going around telling people not to keep the Mosaic law why is he getting rebuked for it? All right, can I answer? Yeah. The reason he's getting rebuked for it because the, they still think that they are, are obligated to Moses. And that's why they're having that whole conversation about that. If yeah. you read the very next chapter, matter of fact, if why you read the book of Acts, but but why instead of rebuking why instead of why did he have to rebuke him why didn't he say you're doing a good job they don't have to keep the mosaic law anymore instead he got rebuked because they were still forced to go do animal sacrifice with him and four other people because my friend i'm trying to explain to you they still think that they have an obligation to moses even though they're christians they still think they have obligation to moses Okay. All still believe that James still believe that, but as as the scriptures are taught, and you see the whole book of Acts, why was Paul being persecuted? Why was he being killed? Because he was teaching against the law. No. But as Christians, he still thought, and they still thought that they had an obligation to Moses that okay. hadn't been cleared up with them yet. Okay, so can you do me a favor? Can you read James chapter four, verse eleven? I like the NLT version. Okay, let me let me get there. This will be a great exercise. So James 4. Yeah, James chapter 4, verse 11 in the NLT. I like to hear your exegesis on this. You want me to go to the you say NLT. Yeah, the NLT. All right, let me find let me find. I got, I got it on here somewhere. Hold on. It's okay. Let me let me get it. Okay, and okay, New Living Translation. All right, here we go. And you say James four, verse eleven. Uh, eleven. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Which which verse? Uh, James chapter four, verse eleven. Okay. Do not. I'm sorry. Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. What law is that? The but your job, law, right? No, that's the law of Christ. <laughs> Where does it say law of Christ here? It says God's law. It's the law of Christ, 
the no, Christ no, no, no. is Christ the now. That's, no. that's the law of Christ. Law. Oh. No, the law of Christ is not God's law. It's, it, it's differentiation. The law of the law. We're we're amenable today to the law of Christ, not Moses. That's what the transfiguration was all about. Okay. When Elijah, when uh, Peter said, "Lord, it's good for us to be here." Okay, so when it says, and when God had to interrupt Peter and said, "This is my beloved son. Hear ye him." Not Moses, not Elijah. They had their day. Now we hear Christ. It's the law of Christ we hear. The point is, is that in James that's four and eleven, that's what the book of Hebrews is all about, my friend. In James 4 11, he says, It's your job to obey the law. Law of Christ, yes. Okay, the law of Christ. So, the, okay, that's good. So, the law of Christ and God's laws are the same. Well, no, the law of Christ, the law of Christ is different. <laughs> Got your ass. Hold on, hold on, go ahead. Don't laugh. Let me explain. Let me explain to you. Let me explain. Don't don't laugh because I, I really think. Real quick, Hassad, Hassad. Dr. Stacy, I'm gonna let you uh I'm gonna let you rebuttal that last one because I, I, I caught you stuttering, and as an elder, I cannot do elderly abuse to my elder. So Hassad, I'm gonna let you ask some of your questions. Okay. Stacy Mobley, go ahead, brother. Respond, respond, respond. about? Respond, brother, go ahead. Let him, let him, go ahead. Yeah. The, 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 law, the law of God, I entered that way because you're equating the law of God with the law of Moses. No, the you... law of Christ is different from the law of Moses. That's, That's why true. I answered that question that way. If you were referring to God's law as the law of Moses, the law of Christ is different from the law of Moses. That's why I answered it that way. Yeah, but you said that when it says God's law, it's talking about the law of Christ. So now we can make that equivalent. Yeah, absolutely. That's, okay. that's okay. God's law today. It's okay. the law of Christ. Okay, so wherever we see God's laws and the law, wherever we see the laws of Christ and God's laws, it's one and the same, is what you're saying. Under the New Testament, absolutely. Under the New Testament. So the laws are written on your heart? Yeah, that's what the Hebrew writer says. What laws are written on your heart? The laws of Christ. The laws of Christ. How many laws are there of Christ? Whatever they are in the New Testament, whatever Christ has told us. Oh, okay. Can you can you name them all? I can read them. You can read them, but you can. So they're on your heart, but you don't know them. You'd have to read them, but they're on your heart. So what the hell is the use of him getting rid of stone tablets and writing them on your heart if you still got to go to the stone tablets? <laughs> no, we don't. Stone tablets are done away according to Second Timothy. Why do you got to go to them and read them then to figure out what the laws of Christ are? Romans ten seventeen. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You read the Bible. You do the same thing that I do. Okay, go ahead aside. Okay, um, I really want to go to Isaiah 66. I really do. Um, you know what? I'm not letting him get away with that. Isaiah 66, you know what, Elder? You know what we'll do? I'll read like five verses up just to just so I know I'm not reading this out of context. Sound good, brother? Well, go ahead, my man. Okay, Isaiah 66 and verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, is the Lord a liar? Oh, come on. You know that. I mean, I, I, I know. I don't know if you know. So I'm asking you, brother. So is it a yes or a no? No. No, it's not. Okay. Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, ye shall be born upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees. Has that happened yet, Elder? Hold on. On a second, I'll, I can answer that better once I get my notes out. Gotcha. So you have the law, the law's written on your heart, but you got to go to the paper and get you know, okay, all right. Just making sure I understand. <laughs> oh my goodness, we Come love, on, we you, love you Christians, got, you got, you, we you, love Christians, understand. we love Christians. That's what you guys you got, have to understand. Got, I mean, if we didn't if, love if you're really serious about the understanding let's let's not make mockery of the scriptures let's let's have a decent conversation 
Stacy, your notes, brother. They're in front of you. They need, you know, you need them. Go ahead, brother. Can you hear me? Yes, brother. We hear you. Oh, okay. I, I don't, I don't see myself on the screen. I thought, I thought I was gone. No, you're not. You're here, brother. You're here. You're just a little dazed, but you're still here. <laughs> You guys are you guys are funny, man. I, I I know you're into it to win to win, but you know I I, I think seriously we we need to um, you know have have a serious serious dialogue about the scriptures. I mean, yeah, if I'm wrong, you know I'm, I'm willing to change. Okay, I'll I, I would you. hope. I have I'm going. Go ahead, brother. Go in. Go into your notes, brother. Cut us. We're in a cult. We don't know what we're talking about. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, and you got the damn sword, brother. Go ahead. Okay, now what are you asking me again? I'm sorry. Okay, Isaiah 66 and 12. For thus saith the Lord, who we agree is not a liar. Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Has that happened yet? Yes, that has taken place in fulfillment of the church that Jesus built. Okay, that took place. Let's keep going. Then shall ye suck, ye shall be born upon her sides and be dandled upon her knees. Let's keep going. As one whom uh, his mother comforted, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. That's happened too? Yeah, all this is taking place in the fulfillment of the Church of Christ. Okay. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation towards his enemies. So the Lord has made his indignation known towards his enemies? Absolutely. Really? Uh, are Hebrew Israelites enemies of the Lord? You're, you're misguided. I, I, I think, I, you know, I... No, I, no, I no, think, no, brother. Brother, don't do that. Just answer the question. Yes, you are. You, you are enemies. Okay, you're enemies so why, of the cross. So, so, yes. so, so how come I don't know his indignation? It says the Lord shall be known towards his servants and his indignation towards his enemies. Why don't I know his indignation then? Well, you 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 will know it at the judgment if you don't repent and do what we told you in Acts chapter two. Wait a minute, I thought this already happened. Why are you saying judgment day? This already happened to you. We said this all happened. Don't worry about it. Let's keep going. No, the, you're talking about the final judgment and, and oh, revelations. You, there, uh, listen, you brother, have to when you have I agree, I agree. God, brother. I agree with you. You're right. This is talking about judgment day. So keep that in mind. Verse fifteen. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire on judgment day, right? No, this this not, what? not final judgment. But wait, you just said it was. No. Yes. No, I yeah. didn't. I said the book of Revelation talks oh, about no. final judgment. You said verse 14 is talking about the Revelation judgment day. So how is verse 14 talking about the Revelation judgment day and verse 15 not talking about the Revelation judgment day? When verse 14 says something and verse 15 says, for behold, he's continuing on what verse 14 says, what you said is Revelation judgment day. Okay, I think- no. I I, think Isaiah is not I the time. Uh, I gotta step in. I gotta step in and, and, and throw in the white white towel. Um I'm sorry? I gotta step in and throw in the white towel. I cannot let this fight go on any longer. It's 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 the ninth round. You didn't want to get off your stool in the corner. You didn't want to have water. I gotta stop the fight. It's over, it's done, Dr. Stacy. We love you. Come out of that cult Christianity and hit the email so we could possibly set something up in the future a little more formal. Cops hop out, we bail on them. Leviticus, I like my fish with scales on them. Ask Chief Ephraim, he could vouch. We be putting in the work while you sitting on the couch. Camp haters quiet as a mouse. Yeah, all ready, shout out to my brother Austin Trout. Just as a reminder, if there's doubt, I wear every single fringe, even when I'm in the house. Yep. Day of Pentecost in the synagogue, I've been a boss. Every minute cost, and I got the dinner sauce. They call me Pace Picante. They put beef on my plate, and I ate the orange. Get all your truth music at DeaconSakari.com. That's nine albums. We even got a couple free for y'all. Support the cause, y'all.
children's Bibles with black and brown images, all on DeaconSakari.com. Even your head wraps stay dipped, stay brewed, dripping. All right, DeaconSakari.com. And sign up to the Patreon. Sign up to patreon.com slash Deacon Sakari to get the exclusive YouTube videos that YouTube will flag and also early releases as well. I broke my watch, but didn't throw it away. Niggas know I don't waste time. Don't mess with my Kendra. You want to check on my fringes? Just look at my... In my hair wrap with my side nice shirt on. If you out pushing this truth, get your work on. This a hair bopper, give you whip lashes. I'm checking all my garments, no mixed fabrics. Catch a eater, might he getting six slashes. This is real gold on me, no wrist rashes. But I don't need a rolly or a pearl bins. I'm keeping the commandments till the world ends. I ain't trying to get caught up with a girlfriend. I'm like Elijah, trying to get caught up in the whirlwind. Popping mollies and putting powder in your nostrils We be in the trenches, needles under benches We be giving them the gospel I keep 12 Sakari members with me We be moving like apostles True, some stisses is dead traps Hair wraps, but you still a thought though The church don't even know the truth They can even tell you you an Israelite And the Arabs selling you all the switches And the malt liquor are the Ishmaelites You can show a nigga slave ships in the Bible Still won't get it right Until the time's out, then a nigga gotta find out What them missiles like